Hi everyone, this is uh, Logician, and uh, there's a good friend Prodigy. Say hi. Hi guys. And uh, oh, we got something cool here. Let me uh, come in and oh, what's this switch over here? I wonder what it does. It says power. Flick. Oh, <gasps> oh, holy crap! That's awesome. Okay, enough of that. So, uh, let's put something in. Random switches. Flicking switches, flicking switches. That one. Alright. And, uh, hit this button. So, uh, wh what we have here? Okay, you probably figured it out by now. It's a calculator. There's more than one on YouTube. But, uh, we're proud of this because we built it all from scratch. Designed the circuits ourselves. No, uh, the only schematics we used were the ones we designed. So, uh, we're pretty proud of it. And, uh, there's the answer. Is that an 8? Whoa, that's a big number. Oh, cool. Sounds about right, though. Yeah. We haven't really tested I this thing yet. I pulled 16 and... I pulled 32 and eight. 16 and all these, so... Probably. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. So, uh... I don't know, you guys can do the math if you want. Yeah, do the math. So, 1 through... What is that? 32 up here? No, 128. And then... Uh, 256 through 32, 768. And we're not going to do the math. Maybe we'll check it later, but... Anyways, so let's go through this access door and show you the guts of the beast. So back here is uh, just a set of flip-flops. I'm sorry, I'm blowing on my mic. That uh, go from those levers, and these outputs aren't set until that equals button is hit. And it sends a signal through here. So that way you can change the levers without changing the current calculation. And uh, it's... You know, it helps to keep it all separate, and you can, I don't know, it's cool. So, uh, then these buses come down he here into this uh, arithmetic logic unit, 16 bits. And uh, what this does is... It's this a pretty awesome design for an ALU, by the way. Yeah, I designed it myself. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty badass. Oh, that's your line. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, um, it's all good. This does the math, this adds the bits together, and then they come down here into uh, this beast. And what this is, is this is called a uh, double dabble. And what this does is it translates that 17 bit uh, binary into uh, something, well, the step before humans can read it. Prodigy's going nuts with Voxel Sniper. <laughs> So, I actually didn't do that one, by the way. Oh, it's raining. That's right. <laughs> I did that one. I'm getting stuck in my own design. So, anyways, these go back, back here. And it goes up these wires, these steps. And it goes into these mechanisms. And basically what these circuits do, and they're probably a little bit overkill, but hell, we live for overkill, <laughs> is that they will stabilize the output pulse because um, when that double dabble is working on the uh, on the number inputted it tends to flicker random outputs so we put this in here so that the display doesn't flicker as much and it uh, stops it from being so annoying and then uh, these buses go up here into the back of that it actually makes it a little faster too yeah, it makes it faster because since the pistons aren't flickering, the server can work faster. Because the server's not, you know, I'm hosting it myself and it's just a crappy little uh, Pentium 4, so it's not the most powerful in the world. As you can see, the uh, input comes in here and it goes into this decoder that uh, translates it into uh, signals for the seven segment display. And it tells it which segments to retract for what number. And uh, I'm not even sure what number this is. I think it's a 2, but I can't be sure. 
and there's five of these, all in the same configuration. These white blocks here Yeah, are, it's a two. Okay. And these white blocks here are um, basically the power. That power switch comes in here and it completely blanks the display. So it's pretty cool and you can turn it off and turn it on and you can see it power up and power down. A lot of doors, a lot of doors, a lot of doors. And, uh, yeah, you went a little one. nuts with the doors. Yeah, I went overkill with the doors, you went overkill with the other stuff like the trees. So shut up. <laughs> I hope the trees don't... Do the trees catch on fire if they get hit by lightning? They do, but since we have it set on easy, um, the lightning won't start fires. And that goes just back to the power switch. So we'll go back down here to this hole I made. And uh, I'll throw it over to Prodigy so he can explain the display, the piston display, and kind of why it's unique and what what's cool about it. So uh, get up here. I'm here, I'm here. Alright, so um, me and Austin kind of, or Logician, sorry. Zach. You can edit that out. Uh, yeah, we kind of uh, designed this thing ourselves. Uh, basically, it just uses uh, a glowstone wall with a wall of water in front of it, and then a wall of glass in front of that holding the water back. And um, the water provides a good contrast to the numbers, because then you can you can see them pretty pretty clearly when uh, when there's a different colored background, and it's like normal piston displays will have the same colored background because if they don't then you can see the the number eight all the time so I don't know I thought our design was pretty unique and pretty smart so yeah and yeah uh, if you guys want a tutorial on that we can give that so and we'll probably be doing tutorials on a couple different things I know I want to do a tutorial on some of the redstone down there as well as uh, the two craft bucket plugins we've been using we're pretty fond of we have a voxel sniper and a world edit and they're both mass editing programs one each has their own pros and cons we used a world edit for a lot of the redstone because voxel sniper the copy paste function tends to break sideways torches and uh, this design uses a lot of them so that got annoying and uh, i got pretty good with world edit and then prodigy used world uh, voxel sniper to uh, do most of the uh, landscaping and including uh, designing this dark room for the display as well as building the display itself and uh, most of the rest of the building itself so that's pretty cool and uh, pretty much the entire building was voxel sniper yeah and all the redstone down there the double dabble the ALU was all world edit yeah World Edit was extremely useful for the Double Dabble because of the um, visual selection box, and we'll be talking about that later. I turned the rain off. Now if we come up here... I see that. Um, we. This is a pretty good showcase of the capabilities of Voxel Sniper. We used mainly Voxel Sniper up here. Is uh, This was just a big stone cube when we started with it, and we covered it in dirt and snow and water and trees and we made it look pretty sweet so we're we're really proud of it and uh, um, so yeah and then that's the volcano and he made a random volcano yeah that's the volcano I made because I was bored and that was all voxel sniper too um, so and then that's an experimentation island. What's with all these random logs out here? Just I don't floating know. logs. I think a tree used to be here and it got destroyed or something. Probably got hit by a random snipe. Voxel, both Voxel Sniper and World Edit are kind of buggy. And sometimes they'll, uh, they'll miss snipe. Like a couple times we've had snipes up here go through and fill in <laughs> the display room and that was annoying and we've had a couple snipes actually break redstone that scared the crap out of us but other than that it's they're really useful plugins and as long as you're careful with them they're really really powerful and really beneficial 
I think that's about it. So, if you would, please just take a second to leave a rating and a comment. Random floating snow blocks. And, uh, yeah, if you guys want to see tutorials on how to use Voxel Sniper or World Edit or, uh, tutorials on, uh, on the Redstone, just let us know. And, uh, I think we'll leave you with that beautiful sunrise over the mountain. Have a great day, guys. Stay classy.